Hello and welcome to the December 2020 edition of what it's like to live with a classic mini. In this series, I continue to go through the realities of what it costs plus the work required to maintain and enhance, to my preferences, a classic Mini. Let's go. 2020 has been a pretty awful year. I think we can all agree to that. And so, to provide myself some Christmas cheer, I purchased a classic Desmo-style roof rack for the Mini. I bought it from Mr. Bridges Retro Roof Racks, and I think he did an excellent job. So, the installation was actually pretty simple. And as soon as it arrived, I couldn't help but giving it a trial fitment, and I think it looks awesome. The rack is secured to the roof by four legs that sit in the gutter. The whole rack is then tied down by two retaining arms that fasten and tighten via a bolt at the top. The four legs that sit into the gutter are then fixed into position by bolts. I upgraded mine to Allen bolts. Once completed, it was very solid and doesn't move at all. One thing I wanted to check was whether the legs blocked the water running in the gutters, which they do to a large extent. So with cleaning the mini, one thing I have to make sure is that I've thoroughly dried the gutters to make sure there's no water hanging around to cause rust. I, was, I would say having the roof rack on the car doesn't significantly increase the time it takes to dry and clean the car. So in December came increased restrictions. And so I needed an excuse to get out and about and I took the Mini to some cool spots I'd seen in my local neighborhood, namely the Downsview Airport. This gave me the opportunity to get the car out, to exercise it, and to make sure that she got a thorough clean once I got home. My front number plate had been affixed using plastic screws that you can see here. However, I pretty much went through a full pack of them because each time my foot hit the number plate, one of them would break. So I upgraded these with bolts, which are now much more secure, although I think I need to paint them white. So let's look at the final numbers of 2020. The only significant spend this month was that of the roof rack. The roof rack actually was at a very reasonable price. However, again, you can see that the delivery was almost as much as the item itself. Looking at the cumulative spend, we can see that I've spent a lot of money this year. And in reality, more than half the value of the car. Us car enthusiasts certainly suffer for our hobbies. However, if you analyze the numbers a little bit further, and when I was justifying it to my wife, it was only really the consumables and the services spend that I had to spend on the car. I did spend a significant amount of money on parts this year. This was mostly to make sure I got the car to look the way I wanted it to look. I also did achieve my objective of keeping the third party costs and services fees very low. However, as my wife says, if you consider the total spend, then I can't deny it that I spent almost £4,000 this year and almost $6,400. I'm hoping 2021 will be a much lower spend. Looking at the December 2020 parts fitted, you can see 100% success rate this month where I purchased one item, the roof rack, and installed it. I have fitted almost £2,000 worth or $3,000 worth of parts to the car, and highlights for me definitely include the brakes and the wheels as well as the roof rack. I also have almost $750 worth of parts still to fit to the car. And, of course, my 2021 New Year's resolutions will involve, to some extent, the fitment of these. The highlight of which I would say is definitely the braided brake lines. In December, I got excellent fuel efficiency of almost 35 miles per gallon. I think this was helped in a large extent by a great mini run I did with some fellow Toronto mini enthusiasts. So I've been taking regular measurements with my Sykes Pickavant tool and the main areas of interest this month was one, a very high idle on one particular day, although it didn't repeat, so I think that was just an outlier, as well as some very low throttle potentiometer readings. Now, both days that these readings occurred, the weather was very cold and it was below freezing. 
So it could be due to this, and I need to do some more research to confirm. However, if anyone does know and could confirm, please let me know. So all that was left for me to do in 2020 was to do some ice skating on my local roads that had completely frozen over. So I'll leave you with some B-roll and I hope you all had a fantastic holiday season and an excellent new year and see you in January 2021. Bye bye.